Hello and a warm welcome to one and all present here at the ETAP Digital Innovations Conference. In this presentation, I will talk about modeling and verification of benchmark test feeder systems with distributed energy resources. Now the benchmark test feeder system of focus today will be the IEEE 123 node test distribution system. And we will be conducting some studies such as volt wire optimization, switching optimization, fault management and service restoration along with three phase unbalanced load flow. This project is available as an example with the latest ETAP release. The outline of this presentation is as follows. Firstly, we shall get into the technical details pertaining to the modeling of the system in ETAP. That includes the lines, the loads, the voltage regulators, shunt capacitors, and so on and so forth. We will then discuss how the system is modified to accommodate distributed energy resources. We are using all PV areas in this case with smart inverters. And in, we will also talk about some of the smart inverter standards that are used in this modeling. In the analysis section, we will be looking into load flow results provided by ETAP and how they match with specifications. Further, we will conduct some optimization in ADMS related studies such as VVO, also more widely known as CVR, switching reconfiguration or switching optimization, and then fault management and service restoration, also referred to as FLISR, FLISR. These studies will be done with and without the effects of DER penetration. In the results and conclusions, we will compare our findings and provide some overall comments. The IEEE 123 node test distribution system is the basis of our modeling and analysis today. It is a 4.16 kV radial distribution network with many three phase and one phase branches and loads. The total rated load connected to this is almost 4 MVA. This system is known for its voltage problems that are addressed through four voltage regulators and four shunt capacitors. There are also two transformers in this system. The system has 11 SPST switches that also make it suitable for reconfiguration and fault management studies. There are a total of 85 lumped loads, both single phase and three phase put together with a mixture of grounding styles and load models such as constant current, constant impedance, constant KVA. We have modified the constant current single phase loads to be 50% constant KVA and 50% constant Z due to ETAP modeling restrictions. The load ratings have further been modified in revision one. Uh, revisions in ETAP are an excellent aspect of its multi-dimensional database where the users can modify ratings of their equipment whilst still retaining the connections and the presentation. Therefore, in revision one, I have modified all the loads to be 100% constant impedance. This will particularly be useful for studies like volt wire optimization, where a reduced voltage will result in lower consumption of power. Moving on to modeling lines and branch elements. There are a total of 116 overhead lines in 12 different configurations. There are five cables which have been modeled using impedances since the admittance span matrix was available. Among the switches, six are normally closed and five are normally open. There are 12 additional switches provided so as to switch in and switch out the PV areas for use later. Take five. The remaining elements in our modeling are transformers, voltage regulators, and switch capacitors. One transformer is at the substation level where the feeder begins, and the other is at the end of the system with a step down to 480 volts that can be used for further distribution. Amongst the voltage regulators, we have four of them. Two of them are three phase. One of them is one phase, and one of them is two phases. What you see on screen here is an example of a gang operated three phase voltage regulator with the measurement based on phase A. We have four switched capacitors. Three are for one phase, each for phase A, B, C, and the fourth one is a three phase capacitor. Putting them all together, 
we have this one line view of the IEEE 123 node distribution system. Of course, we have some modifications which are listed here on this text box for ease of use. We are able to see the utility substation, the voltage regulators here as well as here at the beginning. We are seeing a lot of three one phase branches here as well as the one phase switch capacitors towards the end of the system. With this, we end the modeling section of the presentation. One of the most fundamental analysis and sanity checks that is performed is the load flow analysis. For this system, we carry out a three phase unbalanced load flow analysis. This image is a snippet of the results. The system's voltage imbalance is apparent at bus 160, where there's almost 4% difference between the highest and the lowest phase. The voltage regulator does a fine job of increasing the voltage as well as balancing the three phases at bus 67. The bus voltages reported by ATAP match the IEEE system data sheet. The voltage regulator tap settings that you see here are manually adjusted to achieve this. Looking at the power consumption at the aggregate level from the feeder, we see that the total power supplied for phase A is 1.465 megawatts. The data sheet specifies this number to be 1.463, so we're reasonably close. Similarly, for phases B and C, we report 0.963 and 1.194 megawatt respectively against the specified values of 0.963 and 1.193 respectively. The total reported loss is 92 kilowatts as opposed to 95.611. We can attribute that to modeling constraints and other explainable factors. One of the most obvious explainable factor is that our single phase constant current loads are modeled differently with 50% constant impedance and 50% constant KVA. Besides that, the case of unbalanced impedance is in voltage regulators is not allowed in ETAP. Therefore, we have removed impedance contributions from them. That aside, we can see that um, the voltage level specification as well as the, uh, the power flow between various branches match the IEEE datasheet. Having established a baseline validity of our model, let us look at some standard DMS operations. We first look at switching optimization. Switching optimization is a module in ETAP that gives you the ability to reconfigure switches and get you the best possible network depending on the objective. The chosen objective here is minimize losses. As you can see here, one switch near bus 197 opens up and the other switch near bus 300 closes in order to provide these 10 customers here power through a different route. By performing this action, we are able to gain nearly 2 kilowatt of power in terms of losses. We are conserving those uh, 2 kilowatts. And also notice that the system radi radiality is still maintained. In the next study, we will be looking at fault management and service restoration. The first part of this study is isolating the fault and the second step is restoration. While running the study, there are options to run additional optimization functions such as minimize losses or optimize voltage profile. In this case, we have chosen not to run them and therefore obtain the maximum possible load restoration after the fault has been cleared. We have placed a fault here on line 9 to 6 between bus 57 and bus 60, pretty much in the middle of the network. The fault is isolated by opening switch 6 and switch 7, the green ones that you can see on the screen here. This causes a huge chunk of loads to be lost. About 48 customers are lost, totaling 1975 kilowatt, which is a little more than half of the total reconnected load. So then we perform restoration to see how many loads that we can restore despite uh, a fault being present in the system. 
After running service restoration, we see that switch three closes and switch four opens, and we are able to restore power for 10 customers here on the top right end of the network. You might be wondering why switch four also was opened. This is due to overloading constraints. The FMSR study case has a limit, alerts and constraints section where these can be specified. The restoration will not be done in a manner that hurts the system. Our last study is Voltware Optimization or CVR. We run CVR with an intention to lower the operating voltage as close to 95% as possible. We are running the study in revision 1, where all the loads are 100% constant impedance, hence the loads appear green on the screen present here. After running VVO calculations, we can see that the load profile of different buses here are close to 95 or 96%. We see that several loads here are actually consuming lower power than rated. For example, at bus 107, which is rated at 44.72 kVA, that load is actually consuming 40.7 kVA. All of these sum up to a grand total of 370.94 kilowatt of power that is saved due to CVR. This is the peak shaving amount that we have which is pretty significant and it will matter a lot during peak demand hours. We switch gears back to modeling now. Having seen the basic performance of our system and the validity of its results, we focus on DER integration. Specifically, we're talking about PV arrays with smart inverters. Each PV array is identically rated at 81.29 kilowatts DC, which brings the total generation capacity to 975.5, uh, which is the 28% of the rated load connected. The PV arrays are distributed throughout the systems and they all have smart inverter capabilities. Talking about smart inverters, We have them operating on Voltvar control mode. The smart inverter editor provides the user an option to choose the control curve either from the rule book or provide user defined uh, curves. And this gives uh, an option to include some common industry standards such as California rule 21 or Hawaii 14H. The curve that you see here on screen follows California rule 21. Having placed our distributed energy resources in the system, we move over to analysis. As you can see here, we are running three phase unbalanced load flow again. See that almost every PV array is supplying real power but consuming reactive power. For example, PVA1 is roughly supplying about 21.5 kilowatt per phase and drawing around 13 kVAR per phase roughly on an average. This is because of the smart inverter control curve settings. The reported voltages here are consistently higher than the zero crossing of the curve and therefore the inverter is bound to operate in the absorption quadrant. Looking at the power consumption from the feeder level, it can be seen that the total demand now is 2.88 megawatts, which is 742 kilowatts lower than without PV arrays. We said that the install capacity is 975.5. Although we could not utilize it fully due to efficiency and power factor and various other uh, factors associated with it, we are still seeing a significant dent made in the peak shaving or the peak, uh, peak load curtailment aspect of this thing. We, however, we do see a rise in reactive power consumption due to smart inverters. We've also reduced losses down to 82.8 kilowatts, down from 92 without PV. In our final analysis section, we run Voltvar optimization with distributed energy resources. 
The smart inverters present here can act as sources of, uh, as control variables for the volt wire optimization study. The power factor for the smart inverters will be adjusted in order to make sure we have the best possible peak shaving and CVR results. Again, we're performing this in 100% constant impedance load model revision. As you can see here, after running VVO, we are able to provide a further 362 kilowatt reduction in peak shaving. The initial power is 2,854, almost close to what unbalanced load flow reported. Our final power is close to 2,500 kilowatts and most system voltages are close to 97, 96 or 95% here. Examining the influence of smart inverters, we see that almost all of the inverters power factor have improved or at the worst case remain the same. For example, PVA8 here shows the second biggest jump from 85.13% lagging to 96.5% lagging and therefore it's drawing lesser reactive power. With the combination of a lowered voltage due to CVR and a lowered reactive power consumption from the inverters, we are able to see a double fold or a, a, a compounded effect in terms of improvement for losses and peak shaving. We see that the final loss now is 57.45 kilowatts, an improvement of roughly 28.68 from the base case. To summarize our results between three phase unbalanced load flow and volt wire optimization for this benchmark feeder with and without DERs, we have this neat table right here. Firstly, we see that the addition of DER along with CVR act as a double boost towards peak load curtailment. We are able to improve all parameters including peak shaving power, losses, minimum voltage, CVR factors for the final case that we just studied. The addition of DERs bring about voltage profile concerns. For example, when we run load flow without DER, sorry, with DER, we are getting the final minimum voltage is 97.6%. This is not the case, however, in VVO because our intention is to have it operating around 95% and therefore that is why we are seeing these numbers for that study. The CVR factor is another interesting parameter that is implemented in the industry. The CVR factor is a ratio of the peak shaving load saved as a percent of the average load over the total difference in voltage that's lowered, reduced in per unit. So here for the case with DER, this number is higher. It logically makes sense because our final minimum voltage is still 95. So there is not much change in the voltage differential, but in terms of feeder power, we are reducing significantly that helps bring about this. Before I conclude, I would like to acknowledge that this project has been partially sponsored by the US Department of Energy, Office of International Affairs and Office of Electricity. In conclusion, we have essentially built and analyzed the IEEE 123 node distribution system, which is available in ATAP as a benchmark test feeder system. It is suitable for conducting distribution studies such as load flow, volt wire optimization, switching optimization, PV hosting capacity, FMSR, and so on. It is useful for researchers and engineers to validate their algorithms and results. Thank you very much.